The detectives widened their search to a residence. In the bins behind her apartment, they found something crucial. There were items soaked in blood, like a sock and a bandana linked to Roland. They also found a white sheet, duct tape, bleach wipes, and a two-bladed knife. On March 29, 2019, the night before Samantha disappeared, she had plans to hang out with her roommate and friends in Colombia. During the evening, Samantha kept in touch with Greg, telling him she wished he was there. But as the night went on, Samantha decided to head home alone. She called for an Uber to take her back, thinking it was the safest way to get home. In the early morning of March 30th, patrol officers saw a black Chevrolet Impala like the one they were looking for. Who was Samantha Lee Josephson? What happened to her? Who killed her? Who was the culprit? This is your partner in crime stories. Subscribe and let's move along this mysterious journey ahead. Samantha Lee Josephson grew up in a small town called Princeton in New Jersey. She lived with her parents, Seymour and Marcy Josephson, and they moved to Robbinsville later on. Samantha went to the University of South Carolina and studied political science. She was about to finish her studies in 2019 and wanted to go to Drexel University School of Law. Samantha had big dreams of working in international law. In her personal life, Samantha was very close to her boyfriend, Greg. They talked and texted each other every day. They hoped to have a future together. Greg was planning to move in with Samantha to support her while she went to law school. However, everything changed on March 29, 2019. Samantha didn't come back home, and her family and friends couldn't find her. It was a heartbreaking moment for everyone who knew her. The night before Samantha disappeared, she had plans to hang out with her roommate and friends in Colombia. Even though her boyfriend Greg was not with her, he encouraged her to have fun. Samantha was feeling worried about a sick family member, and she thought a night out might help her feel better if only for a little while. During the evening, Samantha kept in touch with Greg, telling him she wished he was there. But as the night went on, Samantha decided to head home alone. She called for an Uber to take her back, thinking it was the safest way to get home. Sadly, she got into the wrong car. It wasn't her Uber at all. This mistake led to a terrible situation for Samantha. This story is really sad and reminds us all to be careful, especially when using ride-sharing services like Uber. The last time Samantha was seen was on security cameras getting into a black car driven by someone named Nathaniel David Rowland. Her real Uber came later, but by then, Samantha was already gone. It was only through security footage that people realized she got into the wrong car. Greg, Samantha's boyfriend, tried to find her using an app called Find My Friends, but he couldn't get in touch with her, which made him worried. He even drove two hours to Colombia to help look for her. Samantha's body was found by a group of turkey hunters in a quiet, wooded area in New Zion, not far from where she was last seen in Five Points. It was a devastating discovery, made less than a day after she had gone missing. The local authorities immediately rushed to the scene. When they examined her, they found something truly terrible. Samantha had more than 120 wounds on her body, showing that she had been brutally attacked. There were marks on her hands that showed she tried to defend herself, but the injuries all over her body told a story of a desperate fight for survival. It seemed like she was a techhead with a very cruel weapon before being left in the woods. The police quickly looked at surveillance footage from the area where Samantha had been the night before. They shared details about the suspect's car with everyone hoping someone would recognize it and help solve the case. In the early morning of March 30th, patrol officers saw a black Chevrolet Impala like the one they were looking for. When they tried to stop it, the driver ran away, but they caught him after a short chase. The person they caught was Nathaniel Rowland, a 24-year-old from New Zion. They searched his car and found some very disturbing things like a child's car seat with what looked like blood on it. This made them think that something terrible had happened. 
As the detectives looked into it more, they found even more scary things in the car. There was a lot of blood, especially on the passenger seat and in the trunk. They also found a bloody footprint on one of the windows. The discovery of Samantha's cell phone on the floor of Nathaniel Rowland's car was a crucial piece of evidence. It was found alongside Rowland's failed attempt to pawn it earlier that day. This finding, along with the activated child locks on the car's doors, painted a grim picture. It suggested that Samantha was trapped, unable to escape from the car. Inside the car, investigators found various cleaning supplies like bleach, window cleaner, and antibacterial wipes. These items hinted at attempts to cover up the crime to erase any evidence left behind. When Roland was questioned by the police, he refused to give any information about what happened to Samantha. He insisted he was innocent despite the growing evidence against him. During a physical examination after his arrest, traces of Samantha's DNA were found under Roland's fingernails. But strangely, none of his DNA was found on her. This puzzled the investigators. Despite this mystery, they were able to piece together what they believed happened to Samantha in her final moments. They speculated that Roland launched a surprise attack on Samantha. He likely activated the child-proof locks in his car as soon as she got in, trapping her inside. Samantha would have been caught off guard thinking she was getting into her Uber, but instead, Roland attacked her with a bladed weapon, over and over again. Samantha fought back with all her strength, trying to defend herself from the vicious assault. This explains the many wounds on her hands and the condition of her fingernails. It's a heartbreaking thought imagining the terror and pain she must have endured in those final moments. Considering the brutal force inflicted upon her, it's understandable that Samantha couldn't scratch her attacker, which would have left his skin cells under her nails. After the horrifying attack, Samantha was left in a helpless state, unable to escape from the car or defend herself effectively. After the attack, Roland drove to a secluded road in New Zion, a place only a local would know. There, he left Samantha's body in the nearby woods. When he got back home, Roland acted as if nothing had happened, spending much of the day on social media. The detectives widened their search to Maria Howard's residence, Roland's girlfriend, also in New Zion. In the bins behind her apartment, they found something crucial. There were items soaked in blood, like a sock and a bandana linked to Roland. They also found a white sheet, duct tape, bleach wipes, and a two-bladed knife. Tests later confirmed the terrible truth. The blood on these items matched Samantha's DNA, making the case against Roland even stronger. This evidence piled up against him, including charges of having a weapon during a violent crime and the kidnapping and murder of Samantha Josephson. Despite all the evidence, Roland said he was innocent and pleaded not guilty as the trial came closer. In the summer of 2021, Samantha's family faced a tough time as the trial began. Roland's defense team focused on the fact that there was no DNA of his found on Samantha, trying to prove his innocence. But the prosecution had gathered a lot of evidence, aiming to show how serious Roland's alleged actions were. The verdict was swift and decisive. Nathaniel Roland, after just an hour of deliberation, was found guilty. His sentence, life in prison without the chance of parole. It was a bitter ending to a case that had gripped the nation, shining a harsh light on the dangers that could hide behind everyday choices, like using a rideshare service. In the aftermath of Samantha's tragic death, her parents, Seymour and Marcy Josephson, faced their grief with action. They created What's My Name Foundation, determined to prevent similar tragedies, their foundation pushed for safer rideshare practices, urging passengers to always check their driver's identity before getting into a car. Samantha's story, coupled with her parents' initiative, spurred changes within the rideshare industry. New safety features were introduced, including a personalized four-digit code to confirm a ride's legitimacy. Samantha's absence has left an undeniable impact on her family and society as a whole. Her story serves as a sobering reminder of the risks we face in our daily lives, even from seemingly harmless activities.
It underscores the shared responsibility we have to create a safer world for everyone. Through the unwavering efforts of her family and the wider community, Samantha Lee Josephson's memory lives on. Her legacy is one of advocacy for vigilance and safety, a beacon guiding us toward a future where tragedies like hers are prevented. What do you think about this case? Stay tuned. We'll catch you with a new nail-biting crime thriller tomorrow.